Good morning, everybody. Good morning, and, and welcome to our celebration on the 4th. We also celebrate the beginning of Catholic Schools Week. Catholic Schools Week is a time to recognize the impact a faith-based education has on the lives of our students and their families. It is the heart and soul of a school that has the greatest impact on the life of a student. Today, we pray for the sick of our community and the recently deceased and all those in need of our prayers. Love is the greatest of all spiritual gifts. Without it, we gain nothing. God the Father sent Jesus out of love to save us from sin and to teach, teach us how we may, we may have eternal life in heaven. We must strive to continually grow in our love for Jesus, for it is what gives life to our faith and keeps it strong. We welcome Father Perry to lead us in our worship this morning and to be presence of Jesus among us. Please stand and join us in our opening song and prayer. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Also, we are beginning Catholic Schools Week, 
and that's why there are so many children from the school here and the staff. And uh, there will be an open house after the Mass. And you'll hear about it during the Mass. But we just want to welcome them very much during this Catholic Schools Week. And I also want to mention that there will be a second collection today. There is at all the Masses for the school so that we can, as a parish, show our support for the school and appreciate the Catholic education. It's a real gift to us all, especially here in this parish. Let us begin with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of Jesus the Lord be with you all. Thank you. As we begin, let us pause and open ourselves that God may fill us with his mercy and his love. God have mercy on us, forgive all our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 
I want to ask you to focus very clearly today on the three scriptures, but notice, please, uh, the talk about humility of spirit, poverty of spirit, and that's uh, what we need to have in order to let God really into our lives. And all of the readings today will express it beautifully. A reading from the prophet of Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who have observed his law. Seek justice, seek humility. Perhaps you may be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst, a people humble and lowly. Who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord? The remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and speak no lies. Nor shall they be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch their flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Oh, we can try that one more time. We sound a little bit sleepy this morning. That's okay. Listen to the song. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Together. Blessed is the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. The fatherless and the widow the Lord sustains. But the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Corintios. Consideren su propio llamado, hermanos y hermanas. No muchos de ustedes eran sabios según los estándares humanos. No muchos eran poderosos. No muchos eran de noble cuna. Más bien, Dios escogió lo necio del mundo para avergonzar a los sabios. Y Dios escogió lo débil del mundo para avergonzar a lo fuerte. Y Dios escogió a los humildes y despreciados del mundo, los que no cuentan para nada, reducir a nada a los que son algo, para que ningún ser humano presuma delante de Dios. A Él se debe que estáis en Cristo Jesús, quien se hizo para nosotros sabiduría de Dios. Así como la justicia, la santificación y la redención, para que, como está escrito, el que se gloríe, que se gloríe en el Señor. 
palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. Please stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who were persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. I have a priest friend who used to always say during Holy Week, what's so good about Good Friday? And I have to say, I think it's a brilliant thing to say. I mean, what, what was good about that? That's awful. Unless you have the eyes of wisdom to see it and understand it, like from God's point of view. Also, he used to say, um, uh, Today, I came to preach about the good news, but I'm sorry, I have to preach about the bad news. And today, this is about bad news, it seems. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who are persecuted and insulted because of my name. How is that a blessing? Well, again, it depends how you see it. And if you see it with God's eyes, which is filled with wisdom, it explains it quite differently. All the readings today, the first one talked about be seekers of peace, be seekers of justice, be humble, seek humility before God. In the second reading of the Corinthians, the same thing, talking about containing those virtues and that humility of spirit is, is what opens us up to God in our life. And then the gospel, Jesus preaches it from the mount. There were people everywhere. He had to go up a little ways on the hill, on the mountain, so that he could be there and everybody could hear him. They were there because they wanted to hear his words, his teaching. They wanted to be touched by him, to be healed by him, to learn about God and the kingdom from him. And so, of all the things he could have said, he preaches this, the famous Beatitudes. I had a professor in, in the uh, theology, Professor uh, Father Van Linden, and uh, he said this one time in my four years I heard it, and it was like 50 years ago, and it stuck with me. He said, and I don't speak the original languages, Hebrew and, uh, or any of the languages, Greek, any of the uh, original languages of the, of the scriptures, but he said, blessed doesn't really cut it. Blessed is a clean word. Blessed are those who are peacemakers. What does that mean, Blessed. He said the word properly could be better uh, translated by saying something like tons of happiness. And that's what the last line says, happiness. And he was saying that when we 
enter into this place of humility where we empty ourselves of ourselves, because we can get pretty full of ourselves. If we empty ourselves of ourselves, there's room for God to come in. In fact, on the 22nd of this month, February, uh, we begin Ash Wednesday. And uh, it's an old tradition in the church to celebrate those days before Easter and celebrate the Christ. But early on in the history of the church, we began to not keep it as an idea or something brief and short, but spent 40 days and nights emptying ourselves. That's why we do things like we, we give up candy or beer or something. We start reading the Scriptures more. We practice uh, some form of humility, something. Because if we're full all the time, we, we, we can't let things in. There's no room. And the tradition of the church was if you're full of yourself, how is God going to get in there if you don't need God? I know everything. I'm humble. I seek peace. I'm, I'm full of justice. So does God need to come into that? Could he ever get in if he tried? So the tradition of the church is for 40 days and nights, practice emptying yourself and giving room for God and asking God, seeking, like the first reading said, for God to come in. I never went on one, but I grew up seeing it was real popular at one time. I don't know if it still is, these treasure hunts that they would do in the community. And somebody, there'd be a prize at the end of this treasure hunt. And you would be instructed, uh, you'd go to say there'd be a telephone pole, and you go there, and there's a note there, and it's the first note on the treasure hunt. And it says, if you go to the greenhouse um, uh, with two trees, you'll find the next step. And then you were supposed to go down that street and, and find the house with two trees, and there would be another sign there, and they would direct you to another place and to another place. You keep doing this till you got to the end of the treasure hunt. Well, if you were a know-it-all, thought you knew it all, you'd say, I know where that house is. It's right down there. But it just so happens there's three of those houses on the street, but only one has two trees. So the person full of themselves, they know everything. And we all know people like that. Maybe all of us are like that sometimes. I know the house. And they go to the wrong house and someone else beats them to the proper house because they took note of where are the two trees. So they get there and they get the next clue and the next clue. The whole point of this is being able to be empty enough to be filled with new information, more information. And the more that we do that with our God, the more we do that with God's wisdom, the more we do that with the Word of God, the more our lives could be directed by God and filled up with God. I think that, um, for me, a good comparison is Thanksgiving Day. Not so much now, because I can't eat as much as I used to, but when I was a kid, oh, I loved Thanksgiving Day. And my sister, I only have one sister, and she had five brothers. I was one of them. But so when she got married, she got her revenge and had seven girls. And um, you know how the names of my family rhyme, Larry, Perry, Barry, Terry, Jerry, Gary, Marietti. She did deeds like <laughs> Bart and Carol there, Denise, Donna, Deanne, Darla, Deborah, Dina, Donnell. And um, she taught them all everything, how to sew, how to cook, uh, how, everything. She made them work, and they all learned all the chores. And on Thanksgiving and Christmas in particular, they were very proud of creating their own dish and bringing it to the dinner. And I always loved it because they were all good cooks, and, and plus they were real competitive. So uh, Debbie would bring something, and then Donna would say, oh, she just bought it at Costco. And Debbie would say, I did not. I made it from scratch. How dare you? And all the plates were wonderful. So um, I would go, and I'd gorge myself. I'd just I'd eat. And, and I wouldn't eat in the morning, maybe have a cookie or something. I'd say, I, I'm going to keep my stomach empty because I don't want that food. Then I would overeat every single year I never learned. I'd overeat and leave the table stuffed. That feeling, I, I can't even take one more bite. Now, the next thing I'm going to tell you never happened, but I want to imagine it happening. I want to imagine that my dad comes out of the kitchen after I just, in fact, I, maybe I went, mm, and I say, I can't have another bite. I'm stuffed. Oh, come on, Perry, have one more. No, can't. I'm stuffed. 
And then my dad walks out of the kitchen with a 28-ounce steak that's just been finished in that Ruth Chris butter, just steaming, and, and says, here, Perry, here's your favorite steak. I can't eat another bite. Now, that's a physical reality, but what if spiritually we understood it something like that? You know, let's say that you came into church and you're very devout and you prayed the rosary and you said a novena and then you walked out of church and you're full of God now. You don't need any more. Really? Can we ever be full? Well, we can be if we uh, close ourselves off. But what if even after prayer we say, God, thank you for that moment of prayer with you. Thank you for your love. Continue to guide me this day. What if, what if our thinking was there's always a part see enough for God to come in and do more? What if we are not true seekers? And if we cannot empty us all, invite our God in. Now, the, the truth is, and I believe this with all my heart, God loves every one of us exactly the same, 100%. Exactly the same. I don't care how big of a sinner. I don't care if you don't believe in God. I, I just believe in a God that loves us always, 100%. The difference isn't about God loving us. The difference is about our being able to receive it. And so if we're full and we don't need God, we won't feel God. But if we're truly seeking and always asking and believing that God can always gift us more, then our lives begin to change. Today, we're only in the fourth Sunday of ordinary time. Fourth Sunday. We've just begun the year. And we're in the midst of Jesus' ministry, and he's telling us with the best of his wisdom, empty yourselves, open yourselves, Seek me, look for me, ask for me, be ready for me. Look, listen, and if you open your heart enough, not only will I love you, but I'll show you how to love. Now, I just want to add a little addendum at the end. First of all, gracias por su lectura en español. Oh, qué rico, qué bonito, sí. Yes. Now, he's not the beneficiary of this because he's too old right now, but I think, is it third grade? Are we up to third in the duel or second? So uh, we started a couple years ago with making this a dual language school, and we started with the pre-K and kinder, and, and each year we add one more class so that the kids that entered in, in uh, kinder, by the time they graduate nine years later, they will speak like that, read and speak and understand the Spanish. So if you're Filipino, you'll walk out of here speaking Spanish and reading it. If you're African-American, you'll walk out of here speaking Spanish and reading it. If you're a gringo like me, you'll walk out of here reading and speaking Spanish. That's pretty darn good. And for all the gringos and the Filipinos and the African-Americans, you're going to have a double advantage when you go to a job that says, well, we really need some Spanish speaking. Oh, see, sí, yo puedo hablar en español. Ooh, good. But you're white. <laughs> what is this? So, uh, gracias por eso. And um, that's one of the gifts of our school. But I'll tell you the other one is this. I just drove down, um, I never remember the name of that street, the one uh, Fletcher, going up to Fletcher here, the vein over here. Uh, oh, somebody shout it out. Uh, the one that goes between the two schools up there. They have a campaign going on, apparently, about kindness. So I see some signs on their, on their fences like we have out there. Be kind. Kindness is good and stuff like that. And so they're obviously trying to engender and develop in the students a, a deeper sense of kindness for one another. And that is the great gift of Catholic schools. We get the chance every single day not to hint about kindness or hint about religious values. We teach them. We pray them. We speak them to one another, and if there's a fight on the campus, uh, we bring them back to what we believe religiously about reconciling and saying I'm sorry and forgiving one another. We get the chance to put into practice ideas and words and things that, that
that, you know, you can read in the Scriptures and they can be just words on the page until they're written in the heart. And imagine after nine years of going through classes and, and praying together and celebrating the Eucharist and receiving your sacraments and, and listening to and talking to and sharing God among yourselves, how much can happen to us? So for this first day of Catholic Schools Week, this is quite a blessing, I think, for us to be able to celebrate the gift that we have in Catholic education, the gift we have in St. Bernard's School. I think it's been about 50 years, something like that. And there's a, a wonderful and great spirit there. So hopefully uh, it will very well express everything that's in these scriptures today and that we will come to school every day, come to our church every day, ready to empty ourselves a little bit more so that God can fill us a lot more. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Please stand. In the spirit of the wise words of these scriptures, let us renew our promises of faith. My sisters and brothers, do you all reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, father of sin, and prince of darkness? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is, our faith. This is the faith of the church. The of the church. We, are we are proud to profess it. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Beatitudes express God's unconditional love for us. Knowing we are the Father's beloved children, let us present our needs and our prayers to him. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Por los líderes. Por los líderes. De nuestra iglesia. Para que nos guíen. Para que nos guíen. A caminar. A caminar. En el camino. En el camino. De Jesús. Oremos al Señor. Oremos al Señor. We ask that you bless, bless every home and family represented here that all of us may possess a praying spirit, a praying spirit and use what you have given us to help. What use what you have given us to help. What you given, given us to help. And build the kingdom. Build the kingdom. Let's pray to the Let's pray to the Lord. Te pedimos que bendigas. Te pedimos. Te pedimos. Que bendigas. Que bendigas. Que bendigas. A todos los hogares. A todos. A todos. Los hogares. Los hogares. Y familias. Y familias representados aquí, representados aquí, aquí, para que todos tengamos, para que todo, para que todos tengamos, tengamos un espíritu, un espíritu, espíritu de oración, de oración y usamos, y usamos lo que nos ha dado. Lo que nos has dado para ayudar, para ayudar construir, construir el reino. El reino. Oremos, al Señor. Oremos al Señor. Lord, hear our prayer. Por aquellos que están sufriendo en la mente y 
en el cuerpo de nuestro Señor. Toque amorosamente sus corazones con un espíritu de sanación. Oremos al Señor. For the faithful departed, that they may come to enjoy eternal life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are in the Mass Remembrance Book, and for our service, men and women, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the priest to be held in prayer today, Father Perry Lake Liker, and for our own personal intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, we pray for the following people who we hold dear to our hearts. Thomas Moscato, whose birthday is being celebrated today. Vi Vivian Boyle, who is in Thanksgiving. And Lucy and Maria Chung, who are both deceased. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Catholic school community, we pray that we continue to form students in love of God and love of neighbor, to be good citizens of the world and to enrich society with the heaven of the gospel and by example of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the people of the Ukraine region of the world and all those places in the world that are being destroyed by war and hatred and division. For peace in those lands, we pray to the Lord. And I want to remember Elena Tan, who, uh, who had her children in the school and who is uh, near death, and just to keep her and all of the family in your prayer, we pray to the Lord. God of justice and mercy, you know our needs and you relieve our anxieties. Give us humble hearts and make us worthy of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, our gifts may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and all the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your end at the Lord and profess your resurrection. Thank you. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember Thomas Moscato on his birthday, for blessings for him, and for Vivian Boyle, his mother, in uh, this Mass of Thanksgiving for her. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy, especially Lucy and Maria Chung, and also we remember Elena Tan in her last part of her journey. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, with Bernard, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us pray together in the words that Jesus has taught us as we say. Our Father, deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Jesus the Christ who has come to take away our sin and bring us life eternal. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Fit panis omino, dat panis celicus, figuris termino. Ores mirabilis, manduca domino,
And let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this step, this help to eternal salvation, faith may ever increase through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. The first announcement is that we will begin our second collection right now for the school. And thank you for your generosity. This is, helps our school to uh, be better supplied and better prepared. Thank you. Also, um, when you leave the church, there are these forms there uh, with a picture of St. Bernard up at the top left-hand corner, and there are about 15 committees on there. I really encourage you to take it and read it and see if there's an area there that has a lot of interest to you and you would be interested in working with other people to gather information and resources to help our community, not just our church, but also the outer community. Uh, and all of this in preparation for our 100th anniversary in 19 months. Again, I want to mention that if you should encounter people with cameras out there taking uh, video of you as you come to the church and maybe even being vulgar or whatever, uh, it's happening at some churches, and they like to get it on uh, the Facebook page of the parish from YouTube, and uh, they also wouldn't mind a confrontation that you'd lay hands on them so that they could sue. So please don't engage them. Just smile. Think of the last line of the scriptures. If, if they persecute you in my name, blessed are you. How blessed you are. Just let them talk, all right? If you do see them and they're out there, please let me know too because they, they love it if the priest comes out and, and engages with them and then they can uh, uh, embarrass the priest too. So I have enough embarrassment in my life, okay? Um, two things. One is kind of not important, but I just mentioned it because this will prevent me from having to answer it 25 times or more. Uh, yes, I got stuff on the face. I fell in the middle of the night when I went to the facilities and I tripped over my own shoes and, and crashed down and it was uh, a wonderful fall. And I'm still healing from it, but I am okay. At least I think I am. So don't be concerned and thank you for your concern. And finally, <clears throat> I'm going to be out in front of church with these two clipboards and these little slips of paper that um, say adult sacraments, sacramentos para adultos. And if uh, anyone 18 and older needs baptism, confirmation, first communion, or any combination or all three of those, let me know because I will help you. We are here to help you to be able to receive your sacraments and, and be fully functioning in your Catholic uh, faith. So uh, please don't be embarrassed. Just come up and ask for one. You can fill it out right now with the clipboard and give it back to me or take it home and bring it next weekend. But we are here to help you with these sacraments, okay? And uh, are there, is there an announcement for the school? Or? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Chloe Chang, and I'm a seventh grade student at St. Bernard Catholic School. I'm a member of choir and student leadership. For the past nine years, I am privileged to have been mentored by the esteemed educators here at St. Bernard Catholic School. With their guidance, I hope to lead our student body in exemplifying the mission, goals, and values of our foundation. First of all, we thank you so much for coming and sharing in this special Sunday Mass to kick off Catholic Schools Week around the world. Today, we are having an open house and celebrating Catholic education. Our student body, teachers, and staff invite you to come by and see the amazing work we all do every day. We will be hosting a walkthrough of our classrooms to view many of our projects, our pop-up event with food and music, and our science fair in the hall for middle school. We have PTO members to help with tours and information booths if you have any questions about tuition and possibly being part of our St. Bernard family. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Camila Soto, and I am a sixth grade student at St. Bernard Catholic School. If you are looking for a great school to send your ch children from transitional kindergarten to eighth grade, St. Bernard is the right place for you. 
At St. Bernard, the teachers and staff educate the whole child, mind, body, heart, and spirit. We learn to be leaders in our academics and service for others. We are given an opportunity to share and practice our talents in academics, sports, choir, music, mentorship, and in our faith. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Sofia Blanco and I am a seventh grade student at St. Bernard Catholic School. I am a student representative in student leadership and I was on the varsity volleyball team. I have been going to St. Bernard since I was in TK and I hope that it, I can be a great leader in student leadership next year. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Stella Ortega and I am a seventh grade student at St. Bernard Catholic School. I am a part of choir and student leadership. I have been at St. Bernard for the past nine years. In eighth grade, I hope to become an officer and run student leadership. If you are looking for a school that believes that all students can learn, St. Bernard School is the place for your child and family. St. Bernard students are taught using a rigorous curriculum that strives to meet the needs of all students using technology and through teaching the common core standards. Thank you. Buenos dias. Mi nombre es Victoria Calvillo y soy estudiante del octavo grado en la Escuela Católica San Bernardo. Yo también soy una de las presidentes del liderazgo estudiantil. El próximo año... <coughs> Plan <coughs> Sorry. Planeo atender la Escuela de la Salle y guiar al alumnado para que sea más culturalmente consciente de toda nuestra comunidad. If you are looking for a dual language immersion program for students in TK to second grade with target, with target languages being Spanish and English, St. Bernard School is the school for you. Benefits from being part of a program like ours is bilingualism and biliteracy, academic rigor, and cultural awareness. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Abby Galleros, and I'm a seventh grade student at St. Bernard Catholic School. I am also a member of choir and school spirit at St. Bernard. If you are looking for a school that will support, encourage, and nurture your child's gifts and talent, St. Bernard is the place for you. Even though distance learning last year, our teachers and mentors found activities that helped us grow our knowledge and skills. I know because I am a school leader just like all the other students at St. Bernard. We have been taught to lead by example and to help each other nurture our gifts and talents so we can share it with our community and peers. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Sofia Solis and I am a sixth grade student at St. Bernard Catholic School. I am a member of St. Bernard's speech team. Next month, we are looking forward to representing our school in a speech competition. If you are looking for a school where your children will be encouraged to lead, to learn, to have empathy, to love our neighbors, and to grow as disciples, students, and individuals, St. Bernard is the place for you. We work together to help the homeless children from other countries and communities, and our own families. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Andrew, and I'm a seventh grade student at St. Bernard Catholic School. I'm also the student leadership bulletin board leader. Are you looking for a school that has a wonderful, welcoming community to be a part of? Well, look no further. Our school, St. Bernard Catholic School, wants to welcome you, your friends, and your family. I encourage you to make an appointment for a private tour and to consider enrolling your children today or even for next year. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Adela Ortega and I'm an eighth grade student at St. Bernard School and I'm the student leadership president. I'm here this morning to ask for your support. Our school has a yearly fundraising goal of $45,000 for our color run. We are halfway there and would like to ask for your support. All of the money raised goes directly to the school's academic program. We have many extracurricular classes that are fun and engaging for the whole student body. We have extracurricular activities like art, music, PE, choir, flocorico, cooking classes, speech, CYO sports, in the band, and student leadership. These activities help mold and prepare students for future endeavors. I want to add that each classroom has a goal to meet for the color run 
and as an incentive, our school slash parents have offered prizes that we can receive if we meet our goal. For example, if we reach our classroom goal of $2,500, we will be able to have a bouncy house as a prize for our class. We are all working together to raise money for our school because being a St. Bernard student means much more than a building where we get an education. We're involved in keeping our school thriving and students and families part of the mission. If you would like to donate funds to a specific class or sponsor our school through business sponsorships, please come by the front of the church where our principal will begin to give you more information. Thank you once again for listening. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Good morning. My name is Delilah Ortega, and, I'm in the eight, and I am in the eighth grade. This Wednesday on February 1st, the eighth grade will be having a fundraiser at Panda Express. We are trying to raise money for many of our eighth grade activities. Please support the eighth graders by dining in at Panda Express or ordering for takeout. A few of the uh, eighth graders will be at the exit passing out the flyers. The flyers are needed when ordering so we can receive credit. Thank you for your support, and have a great day. Good morning. We will now be announcing our SLE Empowered Student Awards. An empowered student is a person who puts forth their best effort and employs appropriate strategies in the pursuit of excellence, knowing that hard work and persistence will lead to success by employing a variety of strategies to learn and access information, communicating effectively through speech and writing, and recognizing that responsibility and accountability are key ingredients to academic success. In TK, we have Leon Chavarria. He was nominated by Miss Candy. Leon shows initiative during small groups and whole groups instruction. In TK, we also have Emma Bueno Padilla. She was nominated by Miss Thelma. She makes sure everyone feels included during class centers. In kindergarten, we have Olivia Juarez. She was nominated by Ms. Thelma. Olivia continues to push herself to read in both English and Spanish. She applies strategies learned in class and always tries her best. In kinder, we also have Josue Sist Joshua Sistona. He was nominated by Ms. Gonzalez. Joshua always tries his best in class. Joshua is excelling in all subjects in both languages. In first grade, we have Taylor Vado Resendez. She was nominated by Ms. Padilla for applying her skills in class to complete work. In second grade, we have Bethany Gudino. She was nominated by Ms. Padilla for applying her skills in writing and reading and showing growth in her academics. In second grade, we also have Esteban Jimenez. He was nominated by Ms. Padilla for showing strong academic success in reading and writing.
In third grade, we have Oliver Gudino. He was nominated by Ms. Silva for always helping other students and participating in class. In third grade, we also have Danica Chang. She was nominated by Mr. Lopez for showing excellent academic skills in all areas. In fourth grade, we have Nathaniel Canela. He was nominated by Ms. Correa. Nathaniel showed patience and kindness while teaching younger children how to play chess, a game of great skill. In fourth grade, we have Keilani Molia. She was nominated by Ms. Verdugo. Kai puts her best effort in all academic areas, showing great presentation skills during any classroom projects or events. In fifth grade, we have Josue Palacios. He was nominated by Ms. Provincio. Josue is, a, is always striving to do his best in all subjects and helping others in the classroom without being told. In sixth grade, we have Aiden De La Rosa. He was nominated by Ms. McSherry, Mr. Lopez, and Ms. Verdugo. Aiden excels in all his studies. He goes beyond the core's requirements to expand his conceptual knowledge for demonstrating discipline and commitment with memorizing his speech for the upcoming speech tournament within one week. In sixth grade, we have Betsy Rodriguez. She was nominated by Ms. Provencio. Betsy continues to strive for excellence in social studies and is on task with her assignments. Betsy is willing to help others with their class work if needed. In seventh grade, we have Chloe Chang. She was nominated by Ms. McSherry. Chloe is always the first student to help another student in math. She is never too busy to explain concepts to others. She brings excellence to her work. In seventh grade, we also have Alex Marfori. He was nominated by Mr. Barker. Nico is a consensuous student and is always making sure that his work reflects his best effort. And finally, in eighth grade, we have Augustin Moran. He was nominated by Ms. Montiel. He appeared to the students after school on Mondays and Thursdays on his own time and without it being counted for service hours. <laughs> now let's give all of our empowered students a round of applause. Thank you and have a good day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, choir and servers and readers and all the recipients of awards. And thank you, staff and teachers and the principal, Claudia. Thank you all.